Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my co-host Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you? Uh, I don't think we have a guest today, but why don't you uh, tell the audience what we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, well, as uh, as I like to say quite often, doing something different today. So we did a webinar where we tried to parody Family Feud. Now, I was Steve Harvey, a bad impression of him, and Sean was well, Team Vanilla Soft. Deputy captain, I guess you could say. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what happened in the end, who won or who lost, but we had a, a battle with Vidyard. It was really good fun. About half an hour. If you feel like watching it just for a bit of fun, then uh, there'll be a link below. But the three questions that we had, the three rounds that we had, I feel like would be pretty interesting episodes. So we had, now I should pull up the questions here because I've already forgotten them. But um, we had three questions. We had one about what a cliche sales manager would say and uh, what would the answers be. One about what excuses people use to get off of cold calls when they're being called and cringy sales phrases that are used within cold emails. So I thought, let's just come up with a couple right here and now, and then we'll come back up with the reverse. What's like a better way to say the cringy things that are being said in, in a lot of emails. So off the top of your head, cringy things that are said in cold emails, go. Uh, so here's some like that I would avoid. I would say, uh, I don't like sorry to bother you. Um, checking in. Um, one that a lot of people use is, uh, and like, it's, I don't know, it's kind of tacky is, is I've mentioned before, or as mentioned, um, those would be probably the top three and maybe, you know, the words like, you know, to be honest with you, I think a lot of people use in the first line as well, but those are probably four that I can come up with, but, uh, any that I'm missing that you think, uh, that have that have been annoy you. So for me, that would be something like I noticed that I see that quite often, and there's nothing particularly wrong with it. It's just a bit overused. So you get something like I noticed that you went to the school. I noticed that you're hiring. I noticed that literally anything, and it's just like a overly used way of saying here's something I found to try and be relevant, and uh, I've grown a bit numb to it. it. Kind of it now bothers me a little bit more than it probably should, to tell you the truth. Um, but having a look at the survey answers, so there's that one's kind of in there. One that cropped up a little bit more than I thought was, um, did you get my last email? And I completely yes. forgot about that. That's all the time. Probably four a day I get at least of that. Yeah, I mean, um, now, do you, you ever hear the people start off with like the problem, what the problem is? So the problem is that A, B, and C, and I can solve it. Or you should do this and you should be doing this. Do you get that ever or no? Not really, no. Um, is uh, Did I say that quite often? Is that some sort of specific opening line or have you just seen well, a few of them? Because that, I've seen a, that I've just seen sounds more... like strong messaging, but if that's prevalent, I've no, I haven't seen that. Yeah, I've, I've seen where people say should. Now, obviously, everyone hates the word should. So I've seen a lot of people lately in the emails I've been getting saying, you know, you should be doing this, where you should never be telling the prospect exactly what they're doing. You should be helping them providing value and going that route. But um, I've been seeing that more and more lately. But it's it's very interesting how just a few words in an email can really change the dynamics of if someone will read that email or not, right? Yeah, so like on the flip side of that, let's think about what um, what would be a good thing to say in an email. And of course, this is like quite difficult to pinpoint without having seen one or, or have an example to work from. But one thing that um, I'm trying to do more, and I, I wonder if you do this because you're quite you have quite a different style of writing to what i do but uh, instead of saying stuff like you, you know how you always get um hp and oracle have seen results like this or, or whatever instead of saying that and you, you say something to the effect of um working with us would 3x your roi something random right um i try and make that sound a little bit less like a foregone conclusion and i'm now saying we're trying to um working with us may help you see a 3x return on an investment like just take making it a little, little bit less cocksure of yourself just a bit more it may help it might help i don't know if you'll like that because it doesn't sound quite as confident but i think that at least my style when i'm trying there is i'm trying to just say look um you can't just turn this on and it works because most people they know if my problem was that simple i would probably have fixed it by now so if your solution is that simple it probably doesn't apply so it may work that means there's some sort of work. It's a bit more complicated than that is what I've got in my head at least. Now, now, do you think it's better for you to do it that route or actually name a company that you've actually helped before? So, for example, you said it as 
we can help you 3x your ROI. But what you say, what about if you said, you know, Vanilla, our client Vanilla Soft increased their 3x ROI by dot, dot, dot. Like almost like a little case study line versus you just potentially you might be able to do it, but it could also be a false promise. I think um, not, most of the time people don't use social proof because they don't have clients in the market or that they're aware of them. Uh, or they're not allowed to mention it. So oftentimes, like we all know how this goes wrong. People say some massive enterprise and we're not an enterprise or it's a totally different market and it doesn't really translate. That doesn't work because no one cares. If if you work with HP, good for you. Don't care. It doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. It's rare that the same company would work with three adjacent companies to us, I think. And it may be that that's more often than I think. They just don't think to do it. Maybe they're not allowed to say it. Maybe they don't have the visibility into it. There's probably loads of reasons, but if you can say it, I think that works. I think it be, it's like even more about what you do before that though. If you're talking a random, like a new market, for example, you've got no chance to say that. So you're relying on your message. But if, if you're going in like a secondary part of the market, you can say the big name that everyone knows. For instance, um, we work a lot in the higher ed space. King's College London is a big world known school. So if you're talking to a subset of higher ed, maybe you can still say that and it translates. I'm, I'm kind of making something up there a little bit to fit, but you know what I mean? It's not always possible. Yeah. What do you feel about when people say, you know, let's touch base again? When are we going to touch base? Like the word touch base, do you like it? Uh, I'd rather say following up, which are both as bad to me. Um, if you if you really are just asking like what's the consensus when can we meet again when's the right time I thought there's a million better ways to say it touch base yeah. feels like a yet another thing that automated emails just say and you're being like blended into them but please tell me you don't use that please no I that's one of the ones I don't use I mean I, I you know I, I know a lot of people say the hope all is well and all that stuff is bad sometimes it's bad sometimes it's good I mean there's some that I use sometimes depending on the person um, and there's some that like I, when I'm writing emails and I talk to the person before, I know, is it all business or is it some little fun and games or can I have a little personality? If it's all business, I'm taking away all those little cheeky, little cheesy phrases and getting right to the point. So for me, sometimes it depends on the person. What about your call to action? How, um, cause you, well, we've had arguments before about, can you use a calendar link off the, off the rip and that yeah. stuff? I think you've moved a little bit away from that in your thinking, but are you still very like, are you free next week? Cause that's quite open. That's saying like, are you meaning you, you might not be, or are you saying let's meet on Tuesday or, or how I, can I, you, I, you I, position I, that? I don't usually ask, are you free? Um, I usually want to act like I'm the busy one. So I'll usually say something like, does Tuesday or Thursday next week work for you? Or um, how's Tuesday or Thursday afternoon next week? So it makes you look like you're you're busy. You might not be busy or you might be busy. But if you say, are you free next week? It's just basically telling the prospect, I'm always free. Whatever you need me, just let me know and I'll book you in, which then it doesn't look so good. So I, I don't use that are you free line, but um, I mean, I used to. <laughs> of course you did. I've seen a few of them where I'm um... – They'll say, let me see if I can move some things around. Tomorrow, 9.30 works for me. And you're like, yeah. you're not moving anything around. Don't, don't lie to me. Like, I the know. calendar's already Come open. On. So what do you, yeah. yeah I mean. You yeah, I saw on your calendar. calendar, it's free from nine to five. We're like, we can go anytime you want. It's all good. Yeah. Let's move on to some, you know, phrases that you like to try or you use in, in your emails. So some of the ones that you would say, good. So I'll start with one that I like. Um you know, I like to sometimes use now is the, I understand that, you know, this has caused this. So almost like I understand that X or A has caused B as the line, because it shows that if, if that resonates with the prospect, they're more likely to actually reply. But um, I've been using that lately and telling the team to use that. And I read that somewhere and it did resonate with me. So um, that's one that I like. Um, I know there's a discussion on the I hope all is well. People love it. People hate it. Um, but what I also do use and I know people don't like it is um, is less salesy, but it's, you know, I'd like to update you. You know, update you on new features, update you on something I read, update you on anything. Um, 
I've used in the past and sometimes it works. I know people say it's terrible, but you know, I think not one fits all for me, for me, that has been one of the successful ones that's worked for me. There's one I want to try and uh, I think you've probably done it. So tell me if you have, or, or tell me if you haven't, but I've seen a little bit of um, talk about people saying quite like uh, abruptly in their email, that not trying to sort of mask it in a way. Like, you know, there's a little dance we're all trying to do where it's that don't worry, this isn't a crappy sales email. I'm personalizing this to you, but I'm also asking you for your time, just like any other email. It's, it's sort of a silly dance, really. So that they come out right and they say, hi, Sean, just going to be really honest. You're one of my target accounts. I'm reaching out because I saw this and I think it might be relevant. At least that way, you're kind of just, you know, being well, real about it. it. It's very interesting. So uh, our, our um, SDR on the higher ed side, uh, I actually had him a few days ago try something and he, he booked one disco call, but he had some he had some more, more conversations. And I had him on the cold call right at the beginning say, hey, I'm just doing my job giving you a cold call. I get paid to do this. I have to do this. This is my job. Can I have 30 seconds of your time? After 30 seconds, you can tell me, you know, whatever you want. You can get off the phone, et cetera. But, and, and a lot of people like appreciate like, yeah, you know what? I have a job. You have a job. This is your job. Let me give you 30 seconds. Even though sometimes they're just not interested, they still give you that 30 seconds. Um, and he had success on the first day uh, of doing that, which I thought was very interesting because I've always, I've always liked when people cold call me or cold email me to just let me know this is a cold email. Like this is a cold call. I'm cold calling you, Ollie. So it's not like, you know, oh, hey, uh, is this Ollie? Oh, uh, I'm, you know, we spoke a year ago. No, like just tell me it's a cold call or a cold email. Most of the time when I hear that, uh, my default, I don't even think about it, whether I'm busy or not, is I go, yeah, go on then. Before they even ask for how much time, I just say, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Shoot a shot, do it. Is that kind of like when you, get, work. when you get that, that, that break between your cold call and, and as soon as you hear that break and the person's voice say, not interested. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a lame Tinder joke. I won't lie to you. That was some sort of cringy thing you were going to say, but um, no, no, you're yeah, good. I know what you mean. <laughs> but... Um, do you like the one when people say um, at the end, you know, looking forward to hearing back from you? I find that a little bit like passive aggressive, condescending, needlessly. Um, it's it's like trying to virtue signal that we're mates and we like we aren't. And I've when I read that, I'm a bit like, have you really like warranted the reply? I don't know. It's like, you know how to some people, you on a six out of 10 day, you're absolutely fine. But if you just see that one little thing wrong, it, it turns you right off. That's a small thing that sort of bugs me a little bit. I, yeah. I'm not a fan. Of, I never, ever, ever write that. So, yeah. So those are the ones that I uh, I come up with. But Ollie, any uh, any that come up to mind before we uh, we close out the show today? Um, I need something like what you said a moment ago, just the idea that you can, um, you can pose a statement and say sort of loosely, is this true or I think this is correct and accurate and you're not sort of dooming yourself to being deleted if you say, I know that you and it's wrong. So uh, that, that's kind of something like what you said is, is the idea I had in mind, but, uh, but that's what I got. Perfect. Well, that was a lot of fun today. I want to um, thank everybody uh, for listening and everyone that enjoyed the show today. Um, if you did enjoy the show, don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever in the world you are listening from. And subscribe so you don't miss our next episode. We have a lot of really new guests, good guests coming out and uh, and a lot of new content for you guys. So uh, please follow us, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Thank you.